Now, there are, the, actually the implementation of the CFTA started in January 2016, but if we speak about exports, the actual benefits uh, began in April 2014, then EU provided autonomous trade preferences to Ukraine, to Ukrainian exporters. And if we look at exports, it's better to look over these basically five years. What has happened? Uh, yeah, first years we had a deep crisis, although if you look at the real exports, real exports to the, to the EU was always positive. So if we control for uh, price effect. But uh, it's not very visible. You need to uh, look at the data, deep, uh, dig very deep. But if we look at the experts in 2017 and 18, we see a clear boom in experts. In 2017, it was over 30%. This year, it's about 15% increase in 2018. But it's also it's increasing nominal in, in real exertion. Uh, several characteristics. Uh, currently, exports to the European Union is the highest in nominal value since independence. It exceeded also the 2008 data, then was the previous peak. Also, it is the highest in terms of the share to uh, the EU compared to share other countries. Definitely, Russia helped because it closed its markets and it reshuffled, but uh, if you look at the long-term perspective, the highest share to the EU was uh, in 2003, before that, then it was a boom in export and it reached almost 40%, but then it stopped, and currently it's 42%, so in 17 it was very high, and now we have even increase in shares, so we see that the exports to the EU reorients, and also we look at the Growth rates, exports to the EU grows about twice faster than to other countries. Several other characteristics, for example, variety. We have an increase in variety of exports to the EU, while the variety to other countries remain fairly stable. So uh, import exporters, and a lot of them are small exporters, are start starting to export new products to the EU. You don't see this variety change if you look at the major headline experts like corn, like um, some engine wiring sets, but you see that if you look at their smaller items, because okay, small, small exporters cannot export immediately large volumes and values. Uh, also, I didn't check in their whole 2018, we still don't have entire data, but for the first half, the second position was the machine uh, machine building sector products, is actually these ignition wiring sets that were at the 7% of total exports to the EU, basically the second after, after core. So, we have the changes both in the structure and also we change, we see the changes in uh, stimulus for small entrepreneurs to export to the EU. And if you see the discussions, if you see the uh, discussions about ferries, participation in trade missions, more and more uh, businesses are oriented to the EU market. In addition, we have the impact on exports on other, to other countries. In, for example, to Gulf countries or to China. Okay, Georgia did the most, they, they concluded FTA with China. Ukraine, I'm not sure that it's ready to do such a step because it's, it's very radical. But what we see that uh, Ukraine is now exporting to other countries, saying that it fits the EU market, it implement, that the product um, confirms uh, the EU standards. It is both for animal origin products, for other agricultural products, but also for industrial products. That uh, Ukraine implements EU standards, Ukraine is verified to export this product to the EU market, but we export worldwide. It's the most important for agricultural and food industry products because uh, they have very stringent requirements and to say that Ukraine meets EU requirements, that this enterprise is verified to export to the EU is uh, really the plus for selling on the other markets. 
Plus, if we ask uh, the IR, the institute that I represent, Institute for Economic Research and Policy Consulting, we did several waves of survey of exporters and importers asking them how they feel about association agreement. Did, it, did they benefit or not? And the results show that about one third of entrepreneurs say that they have already benefited from the association agreement. And uh, only 6% said that they lost. And most of them said neutral impact. Nothing really felt. So that means that there are opportunities already grasped, but many just don't use these opportunities. Uh, but if they ask, do you expect to gain in five years? Over half of them say that they will gain. And only 6% again said that they will lose. So mostly they don't expect losses. In the future, the gains are expected to be higher, so more companies are expected to gain. And uh, the difference uh, is 40%, about 40 something. Uh, it's split half by half. Some of them say it will be neutral impact, and some of them say they don't know. But I don't think that it's related to association agreement or DCFTA. It's related to the whole uncertain environment in the country and around the country. But basically, both data and uh, surveys show that uh, business is gaining. Uh, also, probably to say something about imports, imports is growing, but not as fast as uh, imports from other countries, and also as actually exports. It means that the uh, balance uh, remains. It's, still deficit. EU imports more, Ukraine imports more from the EU than it exports to the EU, but still the deficit remains stable or even slightly shrinking.